Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at line integrals of a vector field, sometimes also known as work. So let's imagine we are a particle traveling along this curve, represented by a parametric function. You'll want these to be in parametric, otherwise these get really kind of complicated. Now, at any given point, our path is going to be tangent to the curve. And we're going to represent that tangent by the unit tangent vector t. As we travel along this curve, we have this force being applied to us, represented by f hat. This is a vector force right here. And this is giving us the direction of the force. Ima kind of like imagine wading across a stream. You're wading across a stream and you have this current pushing you. It's going to push you in a certain direction. So the force is forcing our position to move a little bit. And the blue line here is, represents that direction of movement. So that will be like in the direction that we actually kind of move. Our path is along this curve, but the force is forcing us, the vector force is forcing us to move in the direction of this blue line right here. What we want to do is we want to find out, well, how much work is being done at this point? But we got to remember, if I'm at this point, it's very small displacement. We're not really moving much. It's a very incremental distance. So our force, di our force, our, excuse me, our work equation, which is force times displacement, I can rewrite displacement being very tiny as this dr, where dr is the small displacement vector along this curve. So if I take my force and I multiply it by this little bitty tiny displacement, I can get work. Well, it really should be, I guess, d work in this case right there. Sorry about that. Now, we do have a slight problem. dr is very tough to, whoops, sorry about that. dr integrating this with respect to r our displacement would be very difficult, if not impossible, to solve because we have way too many variables going on here. So what we want to do is we want to look at the component of the force F in the direction of our tangent vector, of our unit tangent. And to do that, we just take the dot product of our vector force and dot that with our tangent vector. And that's going to give us our, uh, our the component of our force in the direction of t. And that's what we want to do here. And as a result, I can write our work equation instead of f dr, it's f dot t times s. Now, notice I say dot because we are multiplying these together. Now, s, you might recall this as being our arc length. So again, now we're just taking this little piece of an arc length instead of worrying about the displacement. So now we convert our displacement, our work equation, to dealing with the length of our curve versus the displacement that we move. And again, if we let s get really small, we get ds. This is that really tiny change in our arc length right here. So I can write, write my work problem now as dw, the change in work, is equal to f dot t, whoops, my hat there, dot ds. But again, there's, there is a slight problem. S is really hard to integrate. This is not happy face. We don't like integrating with respect to the arc length. That's really nasty to do. So we can convert arc length into a parametric. And to do that, you might recall in a previous video that we did is we're going to take the magnitude of our arc length, which is our speed, multiply it by our change in time. And this right here, that's our ds as a parametric equation. And now we just have this f dot t times our parametric ds. Now, we can go one step further. Our unit tangent vector from earlier this year, we said this is just going to become r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t. This is from a long time ago. This is just the definition of our unit tangent vector in a parametric. It is just the derivative of our 
path divided by the magnitude of, uh, of the path. Also, this right here is a magnitude as well. This is a magnitude of r prime of t. So, oh my gosh, what cancels? These will wind up canceling out. And what I am left with is my new work equation. F dot r prime of t dt. Where this r prime of t, if we think of it this way, this is my, uh, my rate that we're traveling. Remember, r of t is my position, so r prime of t would be my rate of change in position. And dt is my incremental time change. So this is going to give me my displacement. And I'm multiplying it by my vector force. So we have our force times displacement equation. So there's dw. All we have to do now is convert it into our uh, integral form, inter as an integral. And we will get work equals the integral force as a parametric and times r prime of t dt. Notice this is the dot product. It's a dot product because these are both vectors. Because these are both vectors, oops, got my hat there. Because these are both vectors, we're taking a dot product. This is going to give us a scalar right here. And then we would evaluate that from t equals a from t equals b. Now remember, we're going to convert f as well. All right, so take a pause right now. If you need to look back at the video, and we'll continue on in just a second. Here's a quick example of a work problem. So let's imagine on this graph, uh, we have this vector force represented by these following arrows. We have a vector force right here. So these are my vector force. Whoops. Sounds like it's a superhero game. Gang. What's your team name? We're a vector force. And on this vector force, and, and so we have this vector force right here of a, a, a force diagram. And inside this, we have a path. We have a path of a particle. Now notice, let's say the path of a particle is the unit circle. And it's moving in a clock counterclockwise rotation. And our force is, is defined to be yi minus xj. So we have our force, vector force, and we have the path we're taking. Now remember, our path is the unit circle. I could represent that as a parametric by calling it cosine t sine t. Remember, this is just like x squared plus y squared equals 1 for a parametric. Let x be cosine, y be sine. To get work, it is the line integral of a vector field. So I'm taking my line integral of my force and I'm dotting that, multiplying that with my dr. Remember that dr, that is our change in displacement. Now this one dr is actually pretty easy to find. Not always and not always the case. So a way I can solve this now, well my vector force, I want to convert that to a parametric. So my vector force is going to be this sine t negative cosine t. I can get that right up here, ready? Y, we said y is sine t, my my x is negative x, right? Remember this is my change in x, my change in y, my change in y says it's negative x, which is negative cosine of t. Now, I want to multiply that by dr. Well, that's really not that hard in this case, because dr, I can easily get that. If I take the derivative of my rate with respect to t, the problem is that's not always possible, but in this case it is, I can rewrite dr as the derivative of this, negative, co negative sine positive cosine. Remember, this is really dr dt. I just multiply both sides by dt, and I get dr equals negative sine t cosine t dt. And I can plug that in right there. Taking the dot product, we're going to get this negative sine squared of t. That becomes sine times negative sine. Negative cosine times cosine becomes negative minus cosine squared of t dt. And this is going to become the negative of our line integral, the integral dt. And I don't have the bounds here, but we can easily solve this if we had some bounds. But what I want you to pay attention is right here. Notice this is negative. We should expect this to be negative because take a look. Our vector field is going in the clockwise rotation, 
but our path is in the counterclockwise rotation. So because they're going in opposite directions, we should get a negative amount of work in this one. That's like being a senior this time of year, right? Negative work because you guys keep going the opposite of what we want you to do. Ha, ha, ha. All right. Well, join us back for the next video. We'll take a look at a few more examples, some real world, uh, some uh, more examples here. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.